Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have apologies from Councillor Davidson and Councillor Carl Marshall. Okay. Item two, declarations of interest. Thank you, Mayor. Just to clear an interest in item 15, so I'm going to take my discussion about the same item. Thank you. Anyone else? So that's 
I'll make a report in part B uh, and further work on the investigation that's being worked on the way. Thank you, David. Item mm -hmm. 5, public participation. We can say nothing in what's in this event. Item 6, confirmation of minutes. All the council talks in here. I'll move Mr. Chu back up now. I'll show you that. Thank you. Order agreement. Anyone against? Seven committee minutes. Attachment A. My movement is in the Second half. Thank you. Board agreement. Anyone against? In relation to the scheduled meetings, the committee recommends that the committee meetings are adjusted back to Wednesday evenings and there is an attached schedule for members' consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. agreement. I move that we accept the pre scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. agree. Anyone against? Before we move on from this item, the meeting on the 14th of November, which is the, uh, the next meeting of the Finance Committee, that will be at the Masonic Hall, just for members' information. Um, it's a team day from there because we've got something in the bit. interested in, in knowing where this world is going, especially Britain in this day and age, needs to read that document. It's called The Homeless Mother of England 2018. Now, all of the information in there have been pulled together through a crisis taken on all of local authorities' statistics across the whole of the country, and they come up with some alarming statistics. Uh, in fact, uh, the local council's returns for 27, 2018 uh, has increased 8% last year. Now, 8% doesn't sound a great amount, but it's increased 60% since 2012. Now, that is not acceptable. 
I mean, the government has got a good agenda. It wants to eradicate homes by 2027, but the, there's problems within the, how things work, within the benefit system, within the housing developments. Uh, and I don't think the Reduction Act will actually see that, that, that fruition come to, come to light unless local authorities and smaller local authorities like town councils take an inward investment in looking at their needs locally, which this one has, so it's great. Uh, the use of bed and breakfasts, this is absolutely disgraceful. It's not so much in Durham County. Durham County's got a good record. They don't use bed and breakfasts a lot. But across the whole of England, it's increased by 250% in the last 10 years. And if you remember, the, the last uh, uh, council that was in charge of the country said they were going to eradicate <coughs> by 2010. That's never happened. And rough sleeping in the northeast has increased by 32% from last year. And these are all statistics which you'll get from that report. And it hones down to big, heavy, juicy report, but it gives you a flavour of where we're at, where we've come from, but where we're going to end up at if we don't take on board what, what's happened. It's a crisis in, in, the, in the basin. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about what you've invested in and what shape does and, and uh, the outcomes that we're getting from the money that you invested with us. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things we need to make you aware of, and by the way, I've been there for 20 years now, so uh, uh, is the priority groups. It's, it's not the people who are well off, who have got plenty of money, who can fend for themselves. It's the, the hardest to reach and the ones at most, most at risk. And it's homeless people of all ages. I'm afraid now we're at the point in, in this day and age where it doesn't discriminate. Homeless doesn't discriminate. You can be a young person, you can be an old person. And I've got a couple of case studies where I want to share with you which will demonstrate that. Women fleeing domestic violence. You all know that women uh, it, it increase in domestic violence, but there's also a case to be argued about men fleeing <coughs> domestic violence as well. So it, it's both it's both sexes. Ex-armed forces and homeless soldiers. We didn't think we had a problem in the northeast. I, I'll demonstrate in a, fly, in a, a slide <coughs> later on just how much we have got a problem, and it's getting worse. LGBT clients, one of the most vulnerable clients of all groups. Uh, high risk of suicide, high risk of self-harming, uh, and just not people attacking the uh, You've got the prison leavers, and you've got people with diagnosed mental health, and I don't have to explain anything about the statistics around mental health, where, you know, we all know. And care leavers. Durham County is in the care, people going into care in Durham is, 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 is built, is, it's increasing year on year. Uh, I know this information because I foster for Durham County, so I get this information on a regular basis. The support services that we offer, pre-tenancy support, this is what uh, the funding <coughs> from this town council uh, paid towards. And just this year, to the end of September, we have worked with 91 homeless people, or fear being homeless, or GLBT, or fleeing domestic violence, uh, or uh, local armed forces lads. All of the priority groups will work with 90, 91 persons to, up to the end of September. This is just off last one, but we have a social isolation navigation program and we work with 370 people uh, over an 18 month period and everyone had positive outcomes. That was funded through the AP, I just thought I would put that in. I think that what's important is, is that was a pilot and the pilot led to the NHS investing in the AAPs around mental health. So there is pots of money flowing around to help, help, help these at that need. Floating support, this is a contract through Durham County and we work with the most vulnerable for up to two years so that they can maintain the tenancies. We, we, there's 35 people went through that program uh, up to the end of September and we are uh, supporting 29 now new clients in that program. The Plan for Life, we're part of the Durham Works program so we'll look at all of the needs of the young people whether it's education, employment, training, they're all needs so that's heavily, uh, it, that's ongoing for another three years because DWP have invested in the Durham Works program and that, that's run by 
packed house and also the new project <coughs> that I'm in. St. Peter's Court, like I said, I told you around there, uh, is there a need? These are 16 flats we've had we've been running for the last six years. We've had 1,135 referrals in six years, and we've housed directly through St. Peter's and through our partner organizations, such as the uh, Carbon Homes uh, and, and the other housing developers. We've housed 680 <coughs> soldiers who were homeless. Not, uh, sorry, not all ruthless, but homeless. Some couldn't live with the families, some had to pay SD, uh, SD uh, you know, but they've been, they've been housed. Support groups to underpin that, we run a, a number of support groups, the trade and health support, yeah, you, some of you might have heard of Canny Crafts, Canny Coops, there's a GLBT support group, which I'm very proud of, they've been going down the Durham Gear Pride, London, carrying the word of Durham side, and Stanley in particular, and how supportive we are as an environment and, and a local council, town council. Shade House is a new project, Anfield Plain, two years in the development. Uh, I begged Stephen and Borough to get the money to get it up and running, but that's now open. That's, that's, that's going to be housing seven young people uh, with full support and full concierge services. Holy Acre Centre is, a, is another program uh, right next to St Peter's which are more long-term stay for people with disabilities, learning, learning disabilities or mental health around the armed forces. That's 15 independent flats, plus what I'm really proud of, because it'd be the only one in the northeast, a four-bedroom family unit, so that we can work with their soldiers, with their kids, and with their extended family in a controlled, safe environment until they're ready to move back into their own community. Uh, with all the support services wrapped around them. <coughs> Another project that you might not be aware of is the Crime Commission, it's the Citizen <coughs> Programme and Community Probation. We've been running a probation, alongside probation, uh, as, as a partnership with people coming out of prison uh, who may uh, reoffend, but up till now, none of them have, and that's been run for 18 months from a community room. We've taken the probation out of an office space and put it into the community. And the guys who get involved are taken <coughs> on board. Some of them went on to volunteer, but none of them went on to recommit uh, any crimes. Which is something to be said about how you reintegrate people that have come out of prison back into the community. It's just a small project, but it's had massive benefits. Uh, plus, we get involved with everything more than we have to when you're here. You know, every meeting's gone out there. Or I can't get in, I'll push you away. <laughs> this gives you an idea, uh, uh, just a few photographs, that shared house, that's an Anfield plane, that brought an old, empty, derelict building back in the use to the highest quality and standard you can imagine. That's got now 17 studio-like flats, that's the communal room at the bottom, you can see the footprint of the bedrooms, uh, and we're really proud of that. Uh, this is just pictures we've got, we've had, we've had the silver award of the Northern British Forces, we've been put forward for the gold this year. Durham Works, staff in the far bottom corner, they've done a sleep out just to show and an absolutely pickled down that night. It was soaked through to the skin, so it really got a, a flavour of what it was like uh, to be to be sleeping rough on a night time. They could have went into the hood and they never they stuck it out, I was so proud of it. Another picture, uh, St Peter's Court, you can see, every one of them flats has a balcony, it looks over lovely greenage over the fields, uh, and you know the, 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 the lads get involved. Uh, this is some of the other lads, uh, the armed forces, you know, we have guitar lessons for them, we take them up the Red Mount, we do loads of training around pack testing and the uh, computer suite there. Uh, so we're keeping the lads busy because that's what they're used to when they're, when, when they're still the mind starts forming, so you've got to keep them busy. Uh, and that gives it, it's just another flavour of it. And I put that because I'm very proud of it. All of you know how I end the one that uh, Shay opened it. A real old good friend of mine from when I was a kid. So, yeah, it's here. So, when we're looking at pre, pre tenancy support, we're looking at the cost against what are the outcomes, and we look at the number accessing the service, the number of clients housed, the number of clients who remain at home with support, the number of homeless cases averted, and the number <coughs> of clients accessing generalist information. 
And we predict, and I'll give you the reason, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how we predicted that, what we've saved in an annum, uh, just under the one service of our pre-tenancy support, around about £270,000 a year. And these are the statistics. You're looking at the red one, uh, where the red co comes down, the, the 91, and out of their 91, uh, housed, with, there's 42 of them housed, well, I'll have to come across the back myself. <laughs> <laughs> So of house 40, 40, with the specialist advice is 49, uh, but they, some of them might still be viewing or might be somewhere where they're, they're, they're not classed as roofless, but they're still classed as homeless. Uh, 89 out of the 91 have all improved their financial status because when they come through the door, many of them haven't even uh, applied for housing applications or benefits. And one of the case studies, I'll, I'll give you an idea of that. And then it goes down, evictions averted, that's important. We've had people come through the door where they're going to have, they're going to be evicted or they're part way through that process. And it's very easy to stop eviction if you can open a dialogue with the landlord or the, or the, the housing association that is a, a housing that person. They don't want to evict people, it costs them too much. It's a, a, between three and a half to seven thousand pounds to evict someone. So it's, dead, it's a lot easier to stop that eviction. Sometimes you can't, but the majority of times, and it's not too far down the line, you can stop evictions. Reduce alcohol and drugs, and so on and so forth. But we keep a monitor of all of these outcomes for each individual. And that's what we use when we look at how we uh, value the services we do and the cost we're doing against what the notational figure is, which is uh, pulled together through local authorities. Well, town council is not sorry. This is a bit of data I want to give you. This is data that I collect, a bit of an anorak with reports and data. So I collected all the school leavers across Derwent side uh, from 2012 to 2016. Uh, the education department, they were fed up with this. I want to know, I want to know how many people left school, the ages of left school, as freedom of information. That's it. You've got to the names, just want the data. And I can, tell you that there was around 2,900 school leavers across Derwentside left home during 2012 and 2016. Within that period, we worked with 1,322 of them, and they were all aged between 16 and 19. Of them, 849 were 20 years or younger. That meant that one third of every kid that leaves school within the Derwentside area, across that period of time, were going through our door before the 20th birthday or on the 20th birthday. We have got a problem. There's no two ways about it. And the reason I've stopped connecting that data is because I started getting emotional about it. And it's getting worse. It's not getting any better, it's getting worse. So that's just something for you to think about. Really. <coughs> now the case studies, I'll run through them. I'm nearly finished down, because now you only give us 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure everybody's, you know, all right. Yeah, I'm all right, right? Yeah. Case studies, case study one, single female. This this was tragic, this. this she come from a domestic violence uh, unit. She had three children. All her children were autistic and were all in the care centre, in the care centre, in the care system. All she wanted was to see her children, but because she was on benefits, her children, she had to go to Bishop Hall and see her children, it used to cost her 50 odd quid to see her children once a week. So what happened? She didn't pay her rent. She started uh, uh, drinking huge amounts of alcohol. She was going into pubs and fraternizing with uh, men. Uh, she was in a hellish state. She was suicidal. Uh, and we're not talking about a young woman here. Um, Quickly, we identified that the main thing that we needed to do here was get access to our children. And we introduced her to the Bolly Drive Scheme, another great thing that the ADA had been doing when we And within a very short space in a period of time, she started seeing our children three times a week. Our health improved. She was in the process of being evicted, but uh, we stopped that because we put a payment plan in place with the, with the landlord. Uh, she started paying her rent on time, she re-engaged with Alcohols Anonymous, uh, and she got engaged, uh, engaged with another lifeline, I think it was, and now she's fine. Uh, she sees her children on a regular basis. In fact, she's one of the volunteers down in County Coops. We meet every Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so that was one case study that was a positive. And I think it took us maybe 
15 hours of support in the tour at the moment, and then moving her on to the, the wraparound support, which was the canny crafts and the canny cooks. We, uh, we, we use packed house a lot in the world there to volunteer. Use anything and everything that's available to us, we'll use it. This was another, this was a, a male aged 18. Uh, again, th this guy, he, he got kicked out of his, uh, I think he was living with his eldest sister, and his mother died, and his eldest sister kicked him out. And he was living in a shed, uh, and when we got, got him in and done an assessment, uh, he couldn't read, he couldn't write, so he never applied for any sort of benefits. Uh, and when he turned up, he was soaked through the skin, you know, so we gave him a food voucher. When I say a food voucher, we, we, the, the lasses and everybody does little bits and pieces, we'll buy five pound out uh, as the vouchers, so we wouldn't give people, uh, uh, like, a big gun and get a hot meal. I mean, since packs of wood, we send people down there, no, we say we the vouchers. Uh, uh, and again, little things I will put in place, uh, address his age, DHD, you know, we we'll set up his utility bills, we we'll got him in a one bedroom flat, and within a space of about three weeks, he was back on track again, and he went on to floor and support because he couldn't manage, he couldn't even read a letter, uh, so he, he needed support with that, we had to get gas, the gas companies to start sending them uh, big letters out, and, you know, the little things in life what makes it easy for people to to manage. And finally, this is the one because I try to show you one of an older woman and then coming down to a young one, and this is someone who had problems with the police. This was a 40 year old, he was a regular cannabis user, he was OCD, he was emotionally a mess, he was angry all the time. In fact, he come in, I chased him out, he's come back when you when, you know, we're not here to, to, to listen to your shout and bar at people, he wants to help you, come back, he come in, he's angry, that's oil you move again. Third time he come in and uh, he calmed down and he started telling us what was going on. Bottom line was he'd been in and out in prison that much. He was on this merry-go-round of self-destruction. Says, what do you want out of life? Do you want to be constantly going in and out of prison? No, I want to save your kids. I said, well, you're never going to save your kids until you can prove that you're a sensible, caring father. He says, I love my kids. I said, I know, but you've got to prove it. So we got him on the uh, anger management courses, he started engaging with the mindfulness teams, uh, and then he, he, that showed that it, it, you know, he could be a father, and, and he was given access to his kids. Uh, we sorted him out with his own tenancy, he started working, and now he's actually back with his wife and his family, and he still continues to take on, to, to do the training around the uh, anger management, and he's a lot better, happier, uh, person now, and he, and he also volunteered a bit, but he works too much now. So there were the case studies, and this gives you, this is the last one I think now, the DCL and LAG. In 2012, they decided, <laughs> 2012, the government said we need to look at what the costs are across local authorities, and these <coughs> emotional figures, what were pulled together through information from all local authorities, or a lot of local authorities across the, the whole of England, and if you can see there, the, the, the domestic violent intervention, that can cost 2,766, whereas we were 15 hours support, costs about 250 quid. And this is just how we pay for a worker, because we've got the on costs other than, you know, other than a little bit of rent for the building. But one of the interesting ones that I like to point out is the average cost of eviction is £7,095. Now this is the, the, the general rotational figure for the whole of the country. It will be different from area to area. But we know that we have uh, stopped seven cases of, uh, of, uh, of people getting evicted from April to September. So we know we've saved approximately £50,000 in costs. That's police court costs, solicitor fees, removals, and you know, that's, so that gives you an idea. And then the, 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 the mental health, because of the support networks that are in place, not just in the Stanley area, but across the whole of the Durham side area, you've got support networks at Anfield Plain, Durham Oak Field, uh, down the bottom of the street. And you, uh, you've got to remember, if you've got someone who's getting involved with that, they are having an impact in making their mental health better. And they're the types of customs that you can make so that was like 35 cases on single interventions. Uh, you're looking at around 104,000, 104,000 savings. And that is for 20,000 pounds a year. 
for uh, information advice and trade tenancy worker. And obviously, a uh, phone number will out here. And that's me finish. I'll take any questions, Chair. Sorry, that was a whistle stop. Whistle stop. Whistle stop, <laughs> whistle -stop tour. <laughs> You do, but we, whenever we do a note grant scanning, we look to see what's been provided in the area and make sure that it's all joined up. You haven't mentioned CAB, but obviously there must be a link there. We use all of the all of the services. If the, if there's a presentation where there's a legal representation needs to be made, they will make that link to CAB. If we are working with someone on a one-to-one -one and we can do that work, uh, because getting a, getting a, a Getting, uh, getting an interview is pretty difficult. They run off the beat car by now. Uh, but if we can deal with like uh, tenancy eviction without taking, without going down the legal route, then we will. If it is got a legal framework around it, then it would be welfare rights or CFA, and we would make a direct referral through the portal, which we are a member of. We're a member of the Durham. <laughs> the, Durham, the Durham portal, where all of the information advice services are available. Advice. We're a, a four-star member of Advice in County Durham. So, uh, but we do, uh, David, yes, we do use CAM. Very much so. Any more questions, Gavin? Yes, Joe? It's not a question, it's just can we possibly get the slides? We can, oh, you can keep the slides, yeah. All right. We'll get the report and then cross reference and we we'll get back or get anything back. It's always good to you know, get the information that you've got. Can I just thank you for coming along, Kevin? Quite often we don't hear where our money goes. Uh, for some people they get a grant and then we, we never get a report on what they've done. Some terrific information in there. And I'm sure we'll all make use of the slides and the information we're talking about. So thanks for coming along, thanks for the report. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he asked me to pass on thanks to Councillor Marshall, Councillor Clegg, um, and to James. So those are the calls I've completely noted. Thank you. Very good. Well, we're speaking of the number 11 in the application. And I, I received a letter from the parents of this new kid that was sent to Drew Barton. So, yeah, the record is a good critter, but it's up in the comments. Um, I just had a hand to see him. Yes, Christine? Is it yourself that's making the me? No, Ben. No. Is it to come from all kinds of It's going to be good, so I'll come to the That's why I'm, I'll just. You sent the letter to the council, so... David? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. I mean, great that the guys do so well. Uh, unfortunately, we've had many of these type of requests in the past for all sorts of sports events and <coughs> people want to go off away and uh, uh, Olympics and things like that. Uh, and we've all got people that would like to help. Uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't fit in with the policy uh, was, would like to support it if they're having a charity event or, a, or something like that or to raise funds for them to do it then uh, I'm sure we'd all wish to get involved with that and help out where we could but as for making a grant or uh, a donation from a bit we can't do it to individuals and I think it would be a dangerous presence to 
to uh, give it warm because it will be flooded in the That's right. But, um, Shane, we, we can't really, we'd like to, I think we'd all love to just throw our hands up and say spend some more money, but no, we can't. No, we can't. Uh, it would help, we all kind of to put many events on. That motion, Councillor Marshall. That's a motion, yes. That's I'll second that. Second that. <coughs> all in agreement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this was an action which uh, we were tasked with, which was basically organising a meeting of all the staff to, to get feedback, views, ideas about the immediate term plans as part of the review. Um, that meeting was, was held. Uh, it was a, a very interesting day with staff, actually. I think, I think most of them enjoyed it. Uh, we did it an interactive way we broke the staff into groups, we gave them an objective each and asked them to sort of brainstorm their ideas and then we got the other groups to comment on their ideas and know it all done <coughs> together. And as you can see uh, there was a, a big number of, of suggestions, ideas came out of it. Uh, obviously um, your job now as members is to, is, to, is to sort of pick the bones out of the report and decide which ones, um, if any, you think are worthy of inclusion in the plan going forward. Um, my recommendation really in relation to the report, to the report is, that, is that I think that those that relate to the Civic Hall, because there are quite a number of them, should actually be pulled out and go into the Civic Hall Working Group, which will convene again um, in early November, and they can consider that element of it. Um, and beyond that, I think that members should, should have a consideration to any they think that actually should go into the medium term plan, uh, and then enable us to go away and get some cost for those so we can look at how much it would cost improving the budget for next year. Excellent that we've had this consultation with us, but I think, uh, if you may recall, we raised this before that we would like a couple of times a year for staff to get together with members informally over a cup of tea and uh, uh, some refreshments, light refreshments, uh, lavish things, but to get the ideas because we haven't got a monopoly on what we want. We've got managers in here that manage processes uh, and I think this is a start we can look at it not everything we ask for in the same or apply them you can achieve but you can look and see what you can achieve and what could be fit in with what we're doing now uh, uh, so I, I'll agree with what the clerk said that we uh, take the items over there that, that have to do with the running the civic hall and we want to do some more work on that and <coughs> so that information can go there. The other that we can consider alongside the medium term plan, what will fit in there, what we can do, and be realistic. What we're going to do is make sure that we feed maximum of what we're doing. Um, I think if we meet them uh, once the, we've got the plan formulated and the new budget, uh, we'll get an idea of opportunity to spread the work and what we're doing and where we can fit in with it. Uh, um, Mr. Al, no, so, I mean, um, attachment F was, was, was provided to, to members uh, previously, and I just included it for uh, for information that went to we went to the finance committee on the 4th of September, so it's just in there for background information rather than for discussion, unless you want to discuss it. 
Sorry, Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Marshall. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, fit in what we can when we look at the main income plan, what we got from you, new stuff coming about that. But uh, we will uh, take the rest to the city hall and then we'll have a minute if we want to meet this stuff once we've got the new budget set in there the way forward to the new plan for next year. to read the documents that were provided in relation to Matthew Kirtley. Um, <coughs> it was news to me what Temple Railway contacted me that Matthew Kirtley was from the area because as someone who has the best of being a railway nerd in my youth, I'd already heard his name. Um, in the terms of in, uh, railway heritage, he's a very significant figure. He was the chief mechanical engineer of the, of the Midland Railway on formation, which is you know, kind of a big deal. He designed he designed and oversaw the construction of Derby Locomotive Works, which was a huge locomotive works. It was the main locomotive works of the London Midland and Scotland Railway after the in 1923. And it was continuing to make locomotives until 1990, when it finally closed its doors. You know, the, the city of Derby would not exist without Derby Locomotive Works, if it formally does now. And his steam locomotive designs, um, although he was active in the 1860s and 1880s, were still, still running on the main lines of, of, you know, of England. Um, and Scotland until the end of steam in the early 50s, and then that, beyond that, because some of them were sold off to other railways. Some of his locomotive designs were, were, were taken to France and used in World War One. I. I mean, in terms of you know railway engineering, you've got you know you kind of got the Stevensons, and then you and then, and then he's in the he's in the next league down, you know. Um, so he's clearly a very significant person in the railway world, uh, and the evidence has been provided by the nominees of, about where he used to live in Cloudine, uh, where he was born. And so it's uh, just over to members to decide whether or not we are allocate some of our budget to have a heritage plaque to mark Matthew Kirtley. Yes, Colin? <coughs> Colin, we don't have to worry about not knowing where you came from, because when you are down south, you don't know what's up north. <laughs> <laughs> but really, most villages and towns have people, working class people, who are not recognized, not noticed, not seen for the achievements that they've had. And it's fantastic to have a person within our locality who started off from the very, very bottom, and you look at things like, started off from the very bottom and reached as far as he could reach in the career that he decided to take. And he did that in the midst of hardship and even ignored in the likes of the fact that we had the Stevensons around, so he was also not recognized as much as that. <coughs> and for us, we would very much support this and have a plaque to celebrate what we consider as some of our villages. Anybody else? Well, I'll, I'll form a second that. Uh, <coughs> obviously, we do have the little plaque scheme. Uh, it's a pride for people keep appearing that we never heard of, never thought of, uh, and it's good that we can recognise them. Uh, and I hope that you're going to find uh, uh, a suitable location in the vicinity to put it, so we have to think uh, where that's going to be, and have a form of uh, unveiling or whatever, or the last type of the Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll start from the bottom um, on page two, DBS checks. There is an update in relation to DBS checks. Uh, in the notes on that, I have 
been in contact with the Head of Legal Services, the Health County Council, um, with other suppliers from other organisations, and, and the, 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 the place I've reached is that is the town councils are not eligible for enhanced DBS checks in their role as town councils. They may have other roles in the community which, which are eligible. Um, it's, it's, for, it's for members to decide uh, whether they wish to have standard DBS checks, which they, which they could request, or not. Um, I'll probably bring that back to a future meeting for decision. Um, dying to work. The, we have a date penciled in the 7th of November for the charter to be signed by, by the town mayor and representatives from the unions and the TUC. So that is in hand. Um, the War Memorial, I don't have an update for it. Unfortunately, James isn't here this evening, so I'll have to, I'll have to come later. Um, To mind the details of the civic or working group process, and I should really be off here anyway. Um, consultants for marketing materials for weddings, corporate events, we have dealt with with Creo, uh, and they have got some initial thoughts, and that again goes, will go to the civic or working group. Uh, the CNLP update, uh, that's soon as we find out because um, I've got to contact her. The Beacons of Light celebration, we have the Beacon Brazier being manufactured, it will go on to same plinth that the Christmas tree goes on in St. Front Street. We've had some additional groundworks in there to suit the policy for that. Um, we have spoken with, uh, met with our with our events contractors and with Creo consultants and we've put together a for that. I've got the, the poster for that today has been produced. So we'll begin to publicise that in the community uh, before the end of the week. But that is all in hand. Um, the two things that aren't on this is they're obviously on the committee, the, which there has been extra work, but I'll give a quick update. It's the Christmas lights and the defibrillator. We've got, um, we've actually had some response now from the DWP today about the defibrillator. Um, and essentially they've given us a schedule of cost, which we would maybe expect to pass on for us to get the electricity supply installed. The reason it took so long was because the DWP is the estates management company and change nationally. So I don't know the names of the company, but, but they're big companies and they've moved from one to another. So service requests that have been put into their estate management have got to stack up against their edge. Uh, and now they're working back through. So we have a price for that. Hopefully that will start to gain some traction and move. In respect of the Christmas rights, James and myself met with officers from Durham County Council's street lighting team and assets team today and we now have uh, a position where we should be able to move forward on the sites in the town centre. Um, the issue that with the continuing setups and the bank column is still an issue for the, the villages. It may be that we build out the town centre display this year and then follow build the plan after that to, to, to bring it outside the town centre. Uh, but there'll be a full update with a report on that further for committee. Any questions? Yes, David. Just one, Mr. Mayor. If we change the colour of the DBS checks, I'm quite happy with that. Because this was a target that was set to do, and we haven't been able to find where it could be done. So I, I'd like to leave it on there so we can explore other avenues about what can be done. Uh, and we'll come back on that one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's fairly straightforward. Um, the Stars Youth Community Service, who we um, have commissioned detaching the service across the area, uh, just contacted me and said, would it be possible for us to use the the, uh, the community room or the old man's hut that's known locally and enter the plan was not being used by other groups over the winter months when it's as a fallback location? Because obviously, when they're on cold nights, it's, it's useful to do it. Taken back and making the cup of tea, get them out of the cold. Um, 
and they, they, you know, they, they are, they're not offering to pay. Um, they are they are saying that we would be happy to use it whenever it's not being used by other people. Um, so you're being asked to consider that request. Anyone want to call in here? I would say that we should offer facilities that we have at our uh, command to people within the community who are doing active health for us to do. And I'd be perfectly happy to offer them the community but whenever it's, whenever it's not being used for anybody else. And we would expect a fee for that. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I'd be interested to know what the local members have to say about it because uh, obviously if you're using that, they're not using the civic centre. It's not the civic centre, sorry. The community centre. Uh, and also, we've never had a report on what it's actually costing us to keep that building going. I'd be interested to see that report. Yes, Christine. <coughs> um, last year, we did facilitate the little work event with the kids in the park and culture course, so we keep it pretty sent them. And we had them right till the end of winter, then they went out again into the gardens. Until this came on Davis, I didn't know they didn't intend to come back to us. Um, they've not had a discussion with me, with Christine. Um, I don't know if they've had a discussion with Jeanette or Bala, but they're definitely on the discussion with me, so I, I kind of, I don't know the reason for it. Any suggestions what we do? Are you doing it? Yes, James. I'll just um, look at second follow portion that we do look at accepting it because we have a star youth committee, uh, youth committee to do work on our behalf. If it's not getting used, we may as well use it. So when I said it, when it's not getting used, maybe on the night, then it would like to, sorry, have. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll just say that um, the work that we did last year was very Exclusion of personal property. 